St. John is, is a great city. Uh, we do have uh, areas of the city that uh, are in definite need of housing and uh, nonprofit housing is an organization that has existed for three to four decades. So Acre Architects is a carbon neutral company. So one of the things we like to do is look for design opportunities in passive house and environmental efficiency. So it was fantastic our client was on board and, and saw the value in this. So the Wellington project here in St. John is a six-story passive house, multi-unit affordable housing project with the ground floor being commercial and five stories of residential above. I think we were looking for something different and there had to be at the same time something unique because of um, because of the issue uh, that, that came up with heritage. So we thought, how are we going to look at this situation to ensure that it is in the best interest of the community? So originally the building, we had uh, glue lamb columns and NLT floor systems, mass timber uh, design project. And that actually progressed through construction documents. Um, and then when all the pricing went crazy with COVID in 2020, um, it just looked like it wasn't going to be possible um, because this is an affordable housing project. It, you know, we uh, had to maintain cost control as much as possible. Passive housing was something that was on the radar before Acre came, but it, they, they promoted it and they made it possible. At the Acre, we've got a wood first mission. So if anything, uh, any project comes along, we always explore uh, the wood option first. Carbon sequestration, uh, use of our natural resources in the Atlantic, uh, as well as biophilia if we can. For the structural component of the building, we, uh, we ended up going with wood, wood frame, uh, and a hybrid use of uh, concrete on the lower level. Primarily this was to do with thermal bridging um, for Passive House, that was our target, but also for cost, uh, we weighed this with our structural engineer, our client, and in the end it proved to be the most effective. For this project, we chose to panelize the walls and floors for a couple of reasons. One being a tight site, two being um, to reduce waste, and three to help speed up construction during the winter months. We looked at wood primarily um, because it was passive house project. So you want um, high, high efficiency building envelope, high R value, and a really airtight enclosure with low thermal bridging. So that played well into wood. And then what you want to do, because it's airtight, is introduce a uh, high efficiency heat recovery uh, ventilator for fresh air. And that all together reduce, reduces the uh, energy loads significantly. Because this project was a passive house standard design building, um, the thermal value of the walls and roof, uh, in addition to air tightness, are obviously very important. We were targeting uh, our 30 in the walls and our 33 in the roof. To do this, um, we used uh, the wood frame both in the roof as well as the walls to do uh, thermally isolated design. So we had two by six walls with uh, isolating clips before the cladding, uh, mineral wool insulation in between, and in the walls, uh, more insulation. In the roof, we used rigid insulation to help with the slopes, uh, but both achieving a high, high thermal value. Thermal performance and acoustic performance both relate to thermal comfort in a passive house project. And because of the wood construction, we wanted to really zero in and make sure this is uh, acoustically performing well. To do this in the floors and in the uh, walls, we shot for STC 50, right? So a nice, nice uh, acoustic environment for the user. The building has a standpipe system, fire alarm system, and detection system, as well as sprinklers. So, you know, in any sprinkler building, that's gonna be your best defense right off the bat, no matter what you're building with. This was key in this project. Um, we had uh, two hour separation between the commercial spaces and residential spaces, and then a one hour between units and uh, corridors. So with, with the wood system, it, it uh, was fairly easy to meet that. And in fact, we have higher ratings than we need in most of the cases. Here at the ground floor of a uh, six-story mixed-use apartment building and commercial space, the ground floor we're standing in here is uh, slab on grade with concrete, post and beam, and slab second floor. 
and the purpose of that is to transfer a lot of the wood stud walls loads to strategic locations in the ground floor to make maximum flexible use of the ground floor commercial space. We're standing here in stair in the north stair. Uh, there are two stairs in the building, two staircases, and this one is they're both cast in place concrete, shear walls, part of the main lateral system of the building. And inside we have framed wood landings out of dimensional lumber uh, joists with uh, engineered lumber ledgers attached to each flanking shear wall. And also the staircases are built of uh, engineered lumber and uh, plywood uh, steps. Here we're standing on the second floor of the, uh, of the building, looking at our load-bearing walls in the suites. These are built up two by six at 16 on center, so double two by six at 16 on center stud walls. And that's dimensional lumber studs. We have engineered lumber, LVL, top and bottom plates. And that's because of the, uh, the there's reduced shrinkage in the top and bottom plates. And in a multi-story building, that's very important. So we're standing here on uh, the third floor, and this is the first floor where we have uh, plywood floor diaphragms, which act as part of the main lateral force system in the building. And they, uh, they distribute the lateral forces to the shear walls of the building, which is the north-south stairs and the middle elevator core. And what we have on the floors are diaphragm straps, and they're fastened uh, through heavy-duty anchors through the steel straps anchored to the plywood and into blocking in each floor system. And that collects all of the lateral load and anchors it to the cores at each, at each of the three locations. So here we have uh, a section of the building where we've transitioned from wood stud bearing walls to a steel transfer beam, flushed steel transfer beam, where the floor panels are hung from the face of the, of the steel beam. And that was in order to uh, make a larger suite or accommodate a larger suite layout. Uh, and so the steel beam is transferring loads. And what we have is a hybrid of, of wood and steel structure here. And so the floor panels are hung from the face of the steel beam. And that, and that load is carried down through to the concrete of the second floor through these steel columns. Here's an example of where, for fabrication, for ease of fabrication, we've taken uh, some of the load-bearing lintels and transitioned from standard uh, SPF lumber uh, and transitioned to engineered lumber lintels in order to keep the same depth using the stronger material. And this is one of the instances where we've got a heavier, heavier load-bearing elements uh, where we try to do that. And then we have flanking elements above some of these windows, exterior lintels. We've just used the standard uh, SPF lumber. So here at the Wellington, on a typical floor plate, we've got a mix of two bedrooms and one bedroom affordable units. The two bedrooms, as we're in right now, um, are on the corners in some of the east-facing views, getting views of the harbour, the downtown city core, and everything in between. The one bedrooms uh, are the affordable units, and in the middle, looking to the south and southwest, all have uh, big, big frame windows. And what you'll see from the street, uh, we've really tried hard to not make a boring building. So part of that was introducing a, a, a little bit of wave and movement in the window system. And we did that with a structural engineer uh, and a lintel system, which allowed us to get a little bit of movement to them and the placement of the load bearing walls. Um, also, what you could see is the beginning of the window frames. And what we're gonna do is articulate them with extruded uh, metal on the outside, so they'll even appear deeper and have more depth, a little bit more like the historical St. John buildings do. In order to achieve our uh, STC rating or acoustic ratings on this uh, residential unit, what you see here is the plywood subfloor. On top of this is going to be a layer of uh, cork and then the flooring. So the sound won't transmit down through the structure um, to the neighboring unit. And then from above, on top of the, or below the joists, there'll be a sound insulating uh, channel. Again, further dampening any potential sound mitigation in between the units. One of the challenges we had at the Wellington site, as you can see, it's an urban site, was uh, tight site constraints. So one of the mitigation strategies we did was to propose uh, that the wood gets built off-site uh, in a factory and basically it's panelized. So they can come in in sections as they're doing right now on the fifth floor 
and uh, drop them in instead of stick framing the, the product. One of the things we wanted to do in the site planning of this project was to be able to step the building back a little bit in order for the structure not to block the Loyalist House, which is part of St. John's history and part of now the site plan of this project. So each mass of the building slowly steps back in order to reveal the Loyalist House and uh, also create some public space at the corner. From the corner of Union and Wellington, behind me you can start to see the, the slight staggering of the windows appear. It'll become more pronounced by the sixth story, of course, but you, again, you can almost follow up the structure line of the wood uh, beside each stagger of the windows. And that's how a little bit of a play that we use uh, to, in a way, disguise the structure and, and reveal the, more of a window pattern. Not only is this passive housing, but this is aging in place housing as well. So what that means is that when you have seniors that are ready to go into assisted living after a particular point in time, we're actually going to make it possible that they can stay in this building. And Acre has aided us in this pursuit as well, insofar as that they've said, okay, we have special, special rather apartments at this building that we can convert so that seniors who are really getting up there in age can have a place to stay for a longer period of time. In this Passive House project, the wood frame system really helped us achieve our Passive House goals. It's a great place to have mixed housing because there is a large poverty sector in the city, in the uptown, downtown area. And we have determined uh, long ago that the best type of housing actually is mixed housing. And it encourages people to get out involved in the community and to become active members of the community. It's a, it's a great plan. In order for our team to learn, we're excited to get the data from this project uh, and the learnings available there. We think that the carbon um, reduction techniques we've done on this project overall in the passive house and the energy reduction are going to be something that we can keep building on and keep learning from. We've had people actually call us from Halifax and uh, from St. John's and they want to look, they want to watch this project unfolding. And I think that's a great compliment to the architects that built this project, but I also think I give credit to the team that was behind it at uh, St. John Nonprofit Housing to have the foresight to go ahead and to say, okay, this is something new. We're going to encounter various hurdles, but at the end of the day, it's going to be a lasting impression on the city.